Hello, welcome. If you're new here, I'm Claudia. Today we're going to go through my entire Anthurium collection. I used to very much not be an Anthurium person, not because I didn't think that the plants were beautiful, because of course they are and there's so many and then like all the beautiful hybrids, but I just didn't think that I could keep them alive and well as a chronic underwaterer. So Eventually, I started dabbling in them and I realized that I could keep them alive and like most things I really went headfirst into the Anthurium world. Although I think I only have about 11 or 12 of them. It's not that many per se. But today I'm going to show you all of my Anthuriums, even those that I may have some duplicates of. I will tell you a little bit about their story and their care. They will be in no particular order. Let's get started. Brief housekeeping notes. If you saw my last video in a half-ish, there was some issue where like on certain devices the quality of the video looked almost like a little bit slow motion. I'm not exactly sure what was happening but I believe I have fixed the problem. I reset all of the settings on the camera and I did a couple test shots and it looks okay so Thank you so much for bearing with me and back to the Anthuriums. I'm having a little bit of hard time figuring out what to start with because I feel like I have some really special ones and then I have some really big ones. And again, like I said, this is in no particular order. So maybe we will start with those that are living in my Millspo wide. Then we will go to my Millspo tall. And then we will go to those that are in ambient. Um, and then I actually have some still acclimating and quarantining. And maybe we will do those at the end. So let's start with the Millspo wide. My Millspo wide greenhouse cabinet houses for Anthurium. It used to have more, but I'll go through them as I show you the Anthuriums and why maybe they're not there anymore. But first up, it's this Doriaki. I got this one, I want to say last fall, so almost a year ago. It was at LB Plant Fest in the fall, so either October or November. Um, it was tiny and very cute and it has grown it has upsized but ever since I transferred it to pond it even has a pup if you can see down there ever since I transferred to pond um, I want to say it's a consistent grower but it also loses leaves consistently for me so maybe I just haven't figured out the watering and you can see it's definitely due for a pot extender I don't know that I need an upsize there's no roots coming out of the bottom or anything but the leaves are really beautiful and i feel like the camera never captures quite the beauty of these anthuriums with like the sparkly veining but this is quite a beautiful one i love it it's been in the same size pot since i transferred it to pond which was pretty soon after i got it and yeah he's for the most part pretty easy going but i would say Definitely a lot slower in growing and sizing up than some of my other ones. Next in my Millsbo Wide cabinet is this King of Spades. I saw, I think, Ferns, Kings of Spades, a while ago. And then ever since seeing hers, this is the new Emergent, and you can see how, like, orangey red it is. It's so pretty. Um, but, yeah, I saw hers... I don't know, maybe like at the beginning of the year or something. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I have to have one. These are still, you know, probably, they're not very cheap. I was really lucky to get this from Cartel Down, Down I believe is how you say it. And I unboxed this with you. It was a pretty tiny, like, seedling starter. Um, and this is what it's grown into now. It did take it a minute to get settled in and it lived in fluval stratum for a minute while it got like acclimated and all of that. And then eventually I just moved it into pond, the self-watering pot, and it's been doing pretty good since. I moved it into my Millsbow wide cabinet and I have it like in a back corner and there's plants in front of it. So it's not like it's getting all of the light that some of the other plants are getting 
but that cabinet does hold a lot of humidity it's usually like 85 plus like 85 to 95 percent humidity in there and it seems to be doing really well i really really love this plant i can't wait to like see it grow into those big puffy leaves up next you've seen her recently warroquianum or queen antherium so i recently potted her up with you into this bigger pot and i believe this was the newest leaf so pretty comparable in size to the one before but this is just such a stunning plant. So I ended up spraying her with the insecticide for spider mites when I saw them on another anthurium that used to live in there. And it, it was pretty recent after the upsize and I did end up losing two leaves. So, I mean, it's really hard to say if I lost the leaves due to the insecticide or maybe just the upsize, like it shocked a little bit but she is gorgeous. She is one of my favorite anthurium without a doubt. Like she is just so pretty. The hype is true, it's all worth it. So she's holding on to these three leaves, but they're all really nice size. And this was just such an itty bitty plant. I mean, you could see that it had like those pendant like leaves when I first got it, but none of the characteristics that we see now, but I, love her already thinking like she's going to pretty soon and quickly grow out her space in the Millsbow wide cabinet at which point i could move her over to my tall but love her highly recommend up next my gorgeous clarinervium you also recently saw him in one of the plant chores like overdue plant chore videos now unfortunately while i was spraying him down also for like that whole spider mite situation i did end up breaking off two of the inflows and it wasn't when i was spraying it but when i put them in the bin to kind of let them dry out and whatever yeah i must have done something but broke two leaves in two of the inflows and i think that the inflows that i broke are the ones that i was attempting to pollinate i mean I had pollinated them and they had stayed on the plant for several months at this point so my assumption is that it had taken but yeah I unfortunately did break them and I did lose two leaves but she is gorgeous I also wonder if cutting off because you know once the inflows broke I cut them off and I am finally getting a new leaf growth but it's also, I still have two inflows. They're just not at the right time to be pollinated with each other yet. But this is one that I would love to try pollinating. But this has been such an easy anthurium. It sized up really quickly. I mean, I already need a bigger pot for this. And it's just beautiful. Like those heart-shaped leaves the beautiful veining, the color. Like there is not one thing about this anthurium that I don't like. And I also think that it's super easy going. I, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. We're moving on over to my Millsbow tall cabinet and it only has one anthurium. It is the one and only Delta Force. I unboxed this one with you. This one came from Jack's Jungle. This is one of the original leaves it came with. This is another. And then it's given me two leaves under my care. This was the first one it gave me. So a little smaller, which is to be expected because of the acclimation and the shipping, etc. And then this is the brand new one. And it's still hardening off a little bit. Um, it's also given me an inflow, which is exciting i did say this before but someone said that you're not supposed to pollinate the very first inflows that an anthurium gives you because it might stress them out too much and they'll you know kaputs <laughs> and i do see another growth coming in already but i'm not sure if that'll be another inflow or a leaf Either way, it's welcome and highly appreciated. I did have a situation with this when 
where it was acclimate when it was acclimating it kept getting spider mites so i did recently spray it with the insecticide and hopefully it's worked but you can see this is a leaf which you know interestingly enough was already like damaged from other things um has the most spider mite damage but it's i mean what a dream to have a delta force They've come down in price quite a bit from when I first saw this plant and I just I just think it's so cool. I'm so excited to have it and to grow it out in my collection. It came in soil. I did the whole transfer to pond situation. So it's in pond and it's lived in my Millsbo tall, which honestly, other than like the consistent light, it really doesn't get consistent humidity, especially the bottom half will drop into like the 40s because it gets light from that glass door. The top does stay a little bit more consistent in like the 65 for humidity. Um, but I'm also hoping that adding more plants that are in pond will help hold on to more humidity down there, hopefully. But I guess my point is this one hasn't been super picky with that. Um, so yeah. If you can get your hands on one, I do recommend it. I just think it's such a unique plant. And to my surprise, like the leaves are very leathery, very firm. It's not, I feel like it looks really dainty, which I like, but it's actually quite hardy, which is really cool. Moving on to those that are in ambient. Actually, I should have shown you this one when I showed you my other Clarinervium, but this was sold to me as king of Clarinervium, which is clearly not. I mentioned this in another video. By the way, the damage you see is also because I sprayed it with the insecticide, so it did damage some of the leaves. All of the leaves it's currently holding on to are leaves that it gave me uh, because this came as an itty bitty seedling. So I mean, impossible to know what kind of characteristics it had when I first got it um, or like, you know, what kind of plant it was gonna be. Look at that new leaf. What I, this is another thing I really love about anthuriums is that their leaves come in so tiny and then they just expand. Like in two or three days, this is gonna be this size or bigger, which is incredible. But yeah, this was sold to me as King of Clarinervium, which I was, you know, I understand mistakes happen. I rarely reach out to sellers when things go wrong because I, I guess I just feel I'm very aware of the risks that I take when I have plants shipped. And most of the time, unless it's something that's completely irreparable, I won't reach out. But I did pay like 40 something dollars for this itty bitty King of Clarinervium seedling. And turns out it was just a regular clary. I mean, you can get a nice size clary for much less than that. So I did reach out to them and they did end up giving me a refund and I will probably move on from this one even though I love Clarinervium, but I don't need two of them, especially like how big my other one is getting. I'm happy with having just the one beautiful plant. I think I already said this, but we are in the anthuriums that are just an ambient. These live in my office. Um, I'll point out if they live somewhere else. So just in my office space area that is usually like 50-55% humidity, although the last two weeks we've been in like the 45, which is quite lower than we're used to. And you know I keep things real with you, so I'm going to show you this one as is. <laughs> Don't judge me. This is Anthurium Wendy is the nickname for it. Um, I will write the whole proper name down because I always have a hard time saying it. Um, but basically she got severely dehydrated even though she is in pond and in self-watering. Um, she lives like in front of another one and the other one was completely covering it. And honestly, I just kind of forgot. And then as I was going around, I saw it look, it actually had all the leaves were like curled. Um, didn't they looked like very similar to this this is an older leaf and I watered it and two of them came back to life it looks this one's completely like yellowing off which is unfortunate because it's newer than these two and then all of the older ones are gonna go but that is 
okay i will try to be more on top of this one i'm excited about this one because in case you don't know the inflows on these come in like spirally so i just think that that's so cool and i love the pendant anthuriums i think they're so i don't know there's something really magical about them i just i love them but yeah she she needs a little bit of tlc so Next is the Anthurium that was completely covering the Wendy, and that is my Anthurium Beachy. So he's quite massive, honestly. This was one of my wish list plants for 2024, and I was so excited to get this as an import. It's kind of a slow grower, I want to say. This is the newest leaf right here which is a decent size. Um, it recently did start to yellow and I can only assume that's to do to the shift in humidity that I've been having in this room. But this did come to me with like, it was pretty big. I unboxed it with you and I remember being like super impressed at the size of this. I also think it's growing just a little bit crazy because it's reaching for multiple light sources. There's a Soltec light right above it, but then there's also the light from the glass door. So yeah, it's kind of like just reaching for both of them. I would like it to, I don't know, just kind of, because it's kind of going like this. I would rather go, you know, just in one direction, but I'm also going to wait and see, um, you know what's going to happen as it stabilizes from this yellowing so the good news is i do have a new growth point coming but you can see this is like is it called sheaths for anthuriums i don't know the sheath for it was like browning which is what makes me think that it's a humidity issue um but all in all in general I love it. Like, this thing is massive. I think it's just, I don't know, just such a cool anthurium. This next one doesn't currently have a home. It used to live in my Millsbo wide, but got kicked out because it had spider mites. And it's kind of just living in one of my kitchen countertops at the moment. This is Anthurium crystallina. It sized up so quick. Look at the size of this leaf. It's massive. So this is the newest leaf um, that had spider mites and I sprayed it as it was still like emerging. I think it's hardened off now. Yeah, so it's smaller and it is showing quite a bit of damage, but I guess it's to be expected with the spider mite situation in addition to the insecticide that can be quite rough on them. I believe this happened when I still had it over in the quarantine area, like it kept getting kind of slammed by one of my clear boxes um but yeah this thing sized up really quickly this might be no this is like a whole new pup that it's throwing out i was trying to see if any of the original leaves were still on this one this is an original leaf so that must have been like the biggest leaf it had when it came and then it's just sized up significantly and it looks like it has, yeah, just one additional or two additional growth points since. So these little ones are one growth point additional to the main one. And then there are another set over here. So this one and then this one right here. So hard. But um, yeah, look at this leaf. It's massive. It just grew out of nowhere. It gave me this leaf in the Millsbo wide cabinet, but I did, like I said, kicked her out when the whole spider mite situation happened because I was just like, no. Um, and as I'm looking at this leaf that has all the damage, I may just remove it because it does look kind of ugly. So I'll just wait to see the next leaf and then I'll probably just remove that. It also started giving me inflows so this one's on its way out and this one is just emerging and yeah 
I mean, it's it's a really beautiful anthurium, and I would say like another beginner friendly, just like the Clary, and then rewarding because it grows so fast and so much quickly. But currently accepting your ideas as to where this one should go, I'm thinking I'll just keep it in ambient. It's grown quite a bit and also needs a size up, like a pot up. It also needs to be potted up to like a bigger size. Um, but yeah, let me know where you think this guy should go. We are going to talk about two more anthuriums that are in ambient and then we are going to move on to those that are still acclimating and in quarantine that are kind of a little bit more special or rare. Um, so up first is Anthurium pelletiflorum, one of two. <laughs> so this one, I'm trying to think how the story went. Oh, okay. So remember how I got one, it arrived decapitated. This is a replacement that I was sent. It grows consistently and it grows pretty large. My husband just smashed it into one of the drawers, by the way. And um, it's beautiful, obviously. But I can't seem to hold on more than th three leaves at a time. And I can't figure out why. There is one coming. So we'll see. I mean, this one's going to go. <laughs> so I'll be back to three leaves. I don't think I need to... Oh yeah, maybe I do need to upsize it. Can you see? There's quite a bit of roots coming out. Yeah, so maybe it just needs an upsize. And then I'll start holding on to more leaves. But I love Pelletiflorum. It is one of my absolute favorite anthuriums. I don't think that this camera is going to capture just how sparkly and shimmery these leaves can be. So I'll see if I can insert some footage. Um, but this is... The replacement I got for that and then I will show you one more. Now I'm going to show you my other Pelletiflorum which I kind of been babying and favoring because I don't know it's just holding on to more leaves, very beautiful, no issues. I recently potted it or transferred it from the sphagnum moss mix that it was in into pond and unfortunately it's not doing well. So when I first transferred it, it did great and then as soon as the reservoir went empty all of the leaves got really dehydrated um and it just doesn't look happy it did give me or it was already giving me the inflows when i transferred it to pawn so that was fine there is a new leaf coming so it could just be that like it went into shock or something but I am thinking about bringing it out and then just looking at the roots to make sure that everything is okay. And then obviously, worst comes to worst, I'll chop it and try to restart. Um, from what I can see in here, I mean, there's like some root loss, but I also see like new healthy roots. So I'm not entirely sure what or why if it like initially did really well why all of a sudden it wouldn't be um but yeah this is i also feel like this one was maybe just a little bit more narrow again i had more leaves so i yeah i've been favoring it a lot and thought that everything was going great up until just a few days ago when this happened so this one's not such a fun one to share but maybe we can explore together in like the next video what's going on with the roots and see what the plan is going to be for it because like I said it is my favorite <laughs> or one of I, I'm, I'm favoring it a lot um okay and then next so let's go into those that are still acclimating and hybrids and maybe just a little bit more special up first i'll insert some footage because it's over in my seedling tray uh and i'll write the name because i also never remember but this one's from cartel don and it arrived with the other seedlings honestly i don't even know which and which were all the seedling the seedlings for cartel done but basically it was three itty bitty seedlings and they all grew or two of them grew well and like upgraded and whatever graduated except for this one this one is still very itty bitty it's still alive and everything but 
not really growing roots. So yeah, that's the story with that one. So it's in a seedling tray. This one's been a recent surprise. So I bought another one from my friend Kriya over at She Digs Dirt and she included this one for free. She calls it Kriya's Creation. She believes she crossed a Clary and a Crystallinum, I believe, or, Mary, or maybe Forgettii and Crystallinum. I'm not sure. Um, and she's not sure either. <laughs> But this is what the seedling looks like so far. So I'm excited to see what kind of characteristics it's going to get as it continues to grow. The one I actually bought from her was this one. And this is a silver chrome Waroquianum hybrid. So I feel like in this leaf, the biggest one, I can already see both of its characteristics. And I mean, I have a feeling it's gonna look really cool. This is the newest leaf it's giving me or trying to give me under my care, which is just so adorable. I'm curious to see how big that gets. These arrived in like a sphagnum moss, perlite situation, and I just moved them over to fluval stratum because that's just what I'm most comfortable rooting anthuriums and alocasias in. But this is a super cutie and I cannot wait to see this mature. Okay, this is one of the seedlings from Cartel Down. Down? Down? I don't know. Um, and this is a dark phoenix. This is the latest leaf and it is so beautiful. The shade of green is like deep emeralds. Like, oh my gosh. It's just gorgeous. This is the one before, but look at the upsize here. It's like so pillowy velvety just gorgeous like so so beautiful and it's already giving me another leaf right here in the center so i'm excited to see what kind of size that's going to be and it definitely has plenty of roots to be graduating over into pond and into i think they'll go in my millspo tall but I haven't completely decided yet but oh my gosh like if this leaf is any indication of what this is going to look like can you imagine a massive leaf like this oh, I can't wait and the last anthurium in my collection this one is also from Cartel Dawn and this is a hybrid a king of spades by Bossier Bossier am I saying that right Now, I'm not really familiar with the Bossier, if I'm saying that correctly, um, but I am already, like, this is the biggest leaf that it has. I think the color is super unique. I think it's also more of, like, an elongated type of leaf. So, yeah, I mean, again, really excited to see what this turns into. This also has plenty of roots, can be pot it up into you know a more like self-watering system it'll also probably go in my mills bow tall and yeah i just i mean he's a cutie and i think i just think it's so fun to see like the anthurium hybrids and then to see what kind of traits they get from either of the parents uh that's i don't know just such a fun thing to see so sorry there's one more um you wouldn't think so but there is this is anthurium michelle um no leaves. I will insert a photo. It was looking really well. Honestly, I've struggled with Michelle since I got her. I had her in the cabinet. She didn't like it. And then I had her outside the cabinet. She was like in recovery for a long time. Finally gave me a beautiful leaf. Was holding on to it. I, she was already in this setup. I moved her into my office and then I was accidentally or accidentally like touched the leaf and it just broke off so but it's still alive in here and i'm hopeful she'll give me another leaf soon uh, because i do think anthea michelle is very pretty but once she gives me a leaf i think i'll move on from her because we just have had a tough go like i don't know i just she doesn't seem happy with me and even though she's beautiful i feel like I get my fix of her with like my crystallinum and my clary and I'd rather just give more attention to 
some of these other ones that are happier in my space. I think that was actually 15 anthurium. I'll know it for sure and like the description how many anthurium this was and I'll list them all in case you missed any of them on the screen. But yeah, I mean 15 and counting because there's definitely a lot more anthuriums that I would like to have. I've really been wanting like just a mature poppy Forgetti eyes are always beautiful and what I would really love to do is pollinate and like do the whole like seed growing process. I just, I don't know, just something different I haven't done and it's always so rewarding when you can, like growing corns, you know, like being able to create these new plants that you did all on your own. It's just so exciting. This brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment below. Do you like anthuriums? Not so much. Which one's your favorite? Which one should I look into getting next? Because that's another thing I get stuck on. Like, well, which one should I really get? Or like, what should I be looking for? Maybe there's something there I haven't even thought about and you know it. I, I need to know. Thank you for spending your time with me. I want to remind you, I do have a Q&A little prompt over in my community tab to shoot a Q&A video for you. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and drop your questions there. And I will see you very soon. Bye.